Oh boy. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Filmstruck Film Club. It's me, Carson Higgins. I'm here with my buddy Groot. If this is your first time, I'm really glad you're here. We do this every week, so go ahead and follow this. And then, uh, you know, keep up. Keep up, baby! We're just watching movies all the time, and we're having a good time doing it. Uh, speaking of doing it, we watched an incredible movie this week. You like that? <laughs> Boom! Uh, yeah, okay, let's just, let's just dive right into this one. I had been meaning to watch this movie for a very long time. And not that long. It's only been out for like five years, but I somehow missed it. And uh, I've just been seeing it lately. Lately, I've been seeing it like very high up on lists of like favorite films not in the English language or favorite foreign films, uh, which is only foreign if we're in America, which we are, but maybe you're not. And so, you know, anyway, um, any, this, this film's just been kind of like staying very present in my periphery for a, a little while. And I was like, you know what? We got to pull the trigger and watch this movie. So we watched 2016's uh, Park Chan Wook's fucking incredible movie, The Handmaiden. I like, I thought I knew what I was getting myself into. And uh, I just clearly didn't. I didn't know how much of a treat this movie was going to be uh, for so many ways. Obviously, I'm being very giddy and I've already made a pun. But yeah, I'm not going to sit here and just talk about all the uh, very like graphic girl on girl sex scenes that are in this movie. Yeah, they're in the movie, but they belong there. And we're going to get to that in a second. And uh, we'll we'll just clear the air about that. I'm not, we don't need to worry about it. Because they be, they belong in where they are. Anywho, uh, Park Chan-wook. Maybe you have seen his 2003 classic, Old Boy. Uh, I haven't. Don't beat me up just yet. It's just not streaming, man. The times that I ever want to watch it, it's not streaming. And I, I'm cheap, so I don't want to rent it. But I'm going to watch it now <laughs> because The Handmaiden blew my mind off. Uh, there's some just things that we should talk about right out the gate. It is based off a book. I wrote it down. So it's uh, based off Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, which sets our story in Victorian England. Now, Park Chan-wook and his screenplay buddy, uh, I forget her name. But they wrote it together and they adapted it from Victorian England to uh, when Japan was occupying Korea in the 30s, predating World War II, right? Which actually wound up being a very cool way to play with this class structure that would have been happening in a Victorian era set English um, romance mystery. Uh, but by setting it in Korea with this Japanese She's not a princess, but let's just go ahead and call What is she? She's she's Lady Haideko. Haideko? God. I don't speak Korean, and I wish I did. Because then I wouldn't even need to read the subtitles. I would just get to soak in all the beautiful cinematography and just see how it looks all the time, because it is stunning to look at. Uh, the cinematographer on this movie, whew, it's, it's, it's beautiful. This movie's beautiful to look at. Uh, it reminds me of some other films that are like period set films with women in love, you know, Portrait of Lady on Fire, The Favorite, the Yorgos Lanthimos movie. Um, even like tonally, I know that like the only thing really that they share is that they are Korean movies, but like I kept thinking about Parasite while I was watching Handmaiden. And then I also kind of in doing reading and stuff afterwards, I was like, oh, Handmaiden's the movie that could have won Best Picture for Korea before Parasite if we were there yet. But it wasn't even nominated for Best Foreign Language Film that year for who knows why. Um, but it's just like, clearly Park Chan-wook is an incredible filmmaker and The Handmaiden is it's just its just too good, man. Um, yeah, I, I've been talking for a while and I'm just going to say that the story is fun to follow because it jumps uh, all over the place. So I don't want to spoil too many things for you if you were like me and you didn't know a whole lot going into it um, because there's like, a twist, a turn, a double cross, and a triple cross that takes place in this movie. So you gotta, you gotta not keep watching if you don't want it spoiled. But there is like a a, a a heist sort of thing that's getting set up at the beginning where there's people pretending to be, you know, there's a, a pickpocket who's pretending to be a maid. There's this guy who's pretending to be this like fabulous count, uh, and we're gonna like somehow steal this lady's money by committing her into an insane asylum. Uh, and 
so as we kind of are watching the gears turn and and laying all the traps for this this wealthy isolated woman uh it's fun how we bop through time and kind of like something will get said in the moment uh and and then we'll go back to where like it was learned to be said and it's just like a very cool structural thing where i i kept just being like oh that's why oh and okay and so like just getting to sit there and put the puzzle pieces together was a lot of fun until of course the big turnaround where uh and we're going straight into spoiler territory so watch out but the big turnaround when like the handmaiden is dropped off at the uh insane asylum and the other two people are like they had a separate plan all along to fuck her and oh my god it was infuriating and wonderful when it happened uh and then of course we get the whole backstory of like when she was a little girl growing up with her totally disgusting uncle um ugh and yeah man just like by the time all the pieces get put back together to where we realize that we're gonna screw over the dude i was just like man this movie is sick as hell uh and it's it's just stunning to look at too like everything everything about the your visual aural experience of watching this movie is uh for lack of a better word orgasmic because even without the sex scenes i would probably say that same thing because the camera itself as a character is just so mischievous it's always like bopping around and floating everywhere and swooshing over here and the like very fast cuts everywhere boom boom back to here and i was just like in awe the whole time and i just i want to just watch the movie again i probably will i'll probably just throw it on i should really watch old boy and then man there were some other movies by him that looked really cool i haven't seen joint security area but that looks great um stoker looks cool and thirst looks really cool but anyway park chan wook you got a new fan late to the game but i'm here um yeah i we, we, i shouldn't finish this up without like actually talking about it so there's there's like two sides of the fence that you may be on when it comes to uh the sex scenes particularly the one at the very end of the film um that feel like a little male gazy which is a term that I need to probably understand more myself. But um, yeah, perhaps like kind of some of the issues that people may have had with this film. I, I like to think that Celine Sciamma like totally perfected in Portrait of Lady on Fire, um, where there are similarities, but not quite. Eh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, the, the sex in this movie I thought was used brilliantly to be perfectly honest, because I thought that any time that it happened, it was kind of like um, thrown in our face in a, in a way that kind of kept you from like enjoying it, right? It was like just this this thing that was kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, now what? Now what? And I kind of enjoyed the in your face element of it where it was like, these two women are are so free and so, uh, I don't, you know, they're they're, they're clearly like they won. They 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 beat every uh, every man in the story is totally thrown under the bus, and these two women just kind of get to ride off into the sunset uh, in like a much more it's pro- way more satisfying than the end of Thelma and Louise, right? It's like they're t- I, I'm I'm really comparing movies that don't even need to be compared, but uh, yeah, man, I I don't have all the uh, facilities to fully explain this, but most people don't need it explained, I don't think. If, if you had a real hard time with uh, some of the sexual stuff in this movie, I, I don't know what to tell you, I, because uh, it's there on purpose and not just to get you hard, because it, it's not what it's for. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna just go ahead and leave it right there. <laughs> uh, because yeah, man, I, I just like, It's one of those movie watching experiences where like while it's happening, I was just kind of like, I can't wait for this to happen again because it's just such a thrill. Right. Sometimes movies are just made within an inch of their life and they're perfect. And this is one of those movies. Um, Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say other than we're going to have another movie and we're going to watch it together and it's going to be awesome. And it's coming to you tomorrow. Isn't it Groot? That's right. It is. So we'll watch it together. Follow us at Filmstruck Film Club so you can keep up to date with all the picks and stuff. And uh, I hope you enjoyed The Handmaiden because boy, oh boy, I did. Uh, so, yeah, power to you. Keep it real.
I'll see you soon.